Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me again today. This morning I purchased this, which was a parchment pack or vellum. So parchment's a heavier weight vellum. Now we all use vellum in our journals as pockets, um, as just ephemera pieces, sometimes tags, things like that. And so I came across this pack and went, wow, look at the colors in this. Got it home, ripped into it, as you do, and looked at all the sheets and went, I can make them. Now, really, th it's an awesome pack, don't get me wrong. It's gorgeous, it's lovely, but I can make this. So I sat down, pulled out the alcohol inks that I've had for forever um managed to find them because let's face it we don't chuck anything away pulled out my stash of vellum which has few patterned ones that i've purchased through the years and lots of plain vellum as well so this was an actual pack of plain vellum so what i've what i want to show you today is how very quickly to make with alcohol. Now, alcohol inks have had a resurgence lately, so you can find them in so many places. Um, in the old days, they were literally only made by Ranger. There's quite a few different companies making alcohol inks these days, and they're not too pricey, so there's something to have in your stash. But, look. Okay. They're easy to make. We've got some that are more mottled. And I'll show you two different ways of making these. So quick and easy. Now I don't have a great deal of alcohol inks. As I said, I had them for years and years and years. Here they are. So I have a whole what? Two, three, four, five, six. I have a whole 12. And let's face it, the probability of actually using the pitch black is probably nil. I don't know why I have pitch black and the bottle's almost full, whereas a lot of these, there's not much left in them. So very quickly, we're going to play with these. Now, all you're going to need, I've just got some scrap here where I've been playing with it just so it doesn't go all over this. And you can see my hands, I've been playing with it. So piece of vellum. Now I've just cut some, all these pieces down to two and a half inches by four and a half inches. That way I can either have them that way around, landscape way around to make a pocket, or if I want, so like these ones, hang on a moment, that's what these ones are, so I can have it that way in a journal and adhere it like that to make a pocket, or I can have them that way as a tag. So that's why they're all cut at this size. Very quick and easy. Sitting it on some scrap, uh, old magazine, old A4 paper. This was A3 that I've just folded in half to give me extra thickness. Picking out some colours. So I'll pull out lettuce. And I'll pull out, you can see this is one of my favourites. Um, could be citrus. Uh, another one of my favourites is this one, which is pool. We've got raisin, oh, cranberry, got some brights in here, raspberry. I've got some butterscotch. That'll start us off. A couple of different ways we're going to do this. Do it. One way to start with, all you need to start with is a piece of paper towel, just normal paper towel, or a dry baby wipe. Don't use a wet one as in don't use it wet, use it dry. So we'll pull out my citrus. Now you will get them on your hands, but I'll give you a hint for that later on as well. They can be quite messy. Sit your lid down and just drop. You only want a couple of drops. So for this first way of doing it, we're just gonna drop. We're gonna allow it to roll a little bit. We're gonna add some other color. We'll go with pool, cause I love pool. Now, these are the Ranger ones, the Tim Holtz Ranger ones. Um, so they may not be the same colours, but 
but just allow them to roll a little bit, just like when you're playing with wet inks. Now, with your paper towel, just fold it and move your colours along. Add more colours as you go if you want. If you, This is just for a very faded background so that it's not plain. And you've very quickly given yourself a coloured vellum. So let's say we want some more colours on that. And I'm just going to put the lid back on that one to start with. It is only vellum. Play with your colours. You can chuck it. You can keep adding. You can do whatever you like. So watch now. I think I've got the camera down low enough so that you can see all this. Watch when I pop another one on this because it's almost dry. Watch what happens with the drops this time. So what they'll do is they will move the colour from underneath it out as well. So you can see that it's getting a darker area like stained glass. Now you can leave that like that or you can just smear that one in there as well. Now I'm just using plain paper towel because I just want just something light. I'm going to put a little bit of bus butterscotch on there. It's almost like cooking, isn't it? So it tends to take away a little bit of the colour underneath it. Doing it this way. And we're just blending them in together. So this is what I've got going on now. So that I've got this abstract colour going on. I'll move to an area where I haven't got anything going on underneath it. Let's put a darker one in there. I don't know, what have I picked up? Raisin. And we'll go in that oh, lighter spot again. So I'm just going over to a cleaner part of my paper towel each time. And I'm just going to smudge it up. I don't want specific lines or anything else. I just want some colour going on behind it so that I've got that. Now, when I'm putting the lids back on before I drop them or knock them over. So right now, all I've got is some background colour, okay? Which you could use like that. But because it's got that background in there, it's begging to be stamped on. Well, it is for me. Right, so let's stamp on this. Now you can stamp on your vellum. You, those of you that have been playing with vellum would know that. You will need a permanent ink. I find all the permanent inks, well, out of all the permanent inks, um, that the Stazon works the best. So I've got a dark brown here. And I'll use one of those ones again. Hang on a moment. Oh. I'll just use one of these ones again. I love these as tags. So what other ones of it? Let's use Believe. Okay. Oh, chuck you there. So they're just an all-over stamp that I love, which is like this one, and they make wonderful tags so you can see with this one i've added a little bit more of that pool in there now i'm just going to sit that on about where i want it like so i've left a little bit of room at the top so that i can either trim it off if i want to make it smaller or i can add a punched hole in it I'm just going to move. This is just a stamping platform. You can do it with your normal acrylic blocks as well, if you like. All right, let's make sure I'm in shot. So again, taking my ink pad to my stamp. It's a smaller ink pad. So I'm just making sure that I don't end up with lines going across. And I'm just over inking across it all. All right. So, putting him down, rubbing him over, using a rubbing tool, either or, 
just to give it a nice even coat. Now, they will take a little while to dry. So when I lift that off, they don't take that long to dry, but they will take a little bit of time. So you can see it's slightly shiny at the moment. But now all you've got is that areas of colour going through. So here's one that was done a little while ago. So that's now dry. And now we've got that one. That is the easiest way to do it. Okay, so I'll just sit that over there to dry while we're doing this. I use the remainder of my clear just to lightly wipe that because it's stat on, so it's permanent ink. If you want to clean it properly, use a stat on cleaner. Um, for me, that's fine. I'm not overly concerned with clean, clean stamps. So I'll just sit that one to the side, move that one out. Now, for our other way, doing it. I didn't check what time I've been on. This one's only going to be a quick one, guys. Right, so another piece of our vellum. Sitting that down, playing with our colours again. Now, before we start this one, this time what I want to do is this mottled effect. The mottled effect is using a blending solution on it. Now, Blending solution, as you can see, mine's very old and it's got very little left. And I went to start playing with it today and I went, hmm. Then I looked at what it has in it. So can you see all that? And I remembered hearing that our hand sanitizer that we're all using these days is the same thing. <laughs> Would you believe it? Um, and that will clean your hands as well, and it'll get all this ink off your hands. So this has the same, ran right about the same in it. Wasn't quite certain, so I played with it. Pulled out my first little one that I had on a handbag that my daughter bought me, but it was a gel. So it wasn't that easy to work with. The other one that I had had little sparklies in it. That one was definitely a no-go. So I raced down to work and grabbed one of our work ones. Um, I have popped it in a little squeezy bottle and it works brilliantly. Okay, so just a tip, nice and cheap, because let's face it, hand sanitizer is everywhere and it's as cheap as chips these days. Well, it is in Australia. So by all means, go and get yourself some hand sanitizer for that, if nothing else. Um, right, back to this. So we're just going to, put our colours on, we're going to use our blending solution, hand sanitizer, and we're going to use foam. Now, originally, I'll just peel that one off. Remember when these ones first came out? When these first came out, which are the older versions of these, they actually came out for doing our alcohol inks. Um, sorry if I moved the camera there. And they came with little pieces of foam not foam, felt, which then just adhered on. Later on, they put out the little foam pieces, you can see my old container of them, the little foam pieces that went on there instead of the felt, and we were all then using them for our inks. These days, the round ones are in, and then the round ones, of course, came out with the flat foam, and now they come out with the domed foam. You know, it's always reinventing the wheel. So I still have my square ones, and they're easier to cut little felt pieces. This is a very old felt piece, and it was the only felt piece that I had in the house. But because it's been so used, it will pick up the colours that are already in it. So I just went and got a piece of craft foam that I had in the drawer. Again, don't ask me why, but I knew it was in the drawer. And I've just cut them to the same size. And they work just as well. <laughs> so, you know... Um, so they just go onto the little Velcro pad. They will adhere onto that. That is just normal, everyday craft felt that I would say has been bought for a Christmas project or of some sort, sometime. Right, so this time we're going to do a mottled one. So I'm going to use a darker green bottle. And I'm going to do my dots. 
and I'll go with my ginger, which is a darker brown. Mm, that comes out well, doesn't it? And let's chuck some pool in there because I just love pool. Let's go in the middle there, like that. And that. Now, when we're using the blending solution, um, you saw me do uh, this one a little while ago. Oh, so that's almost completely dry now. And it stayed flat. As soon as I start putting the blending solution with this one, it does want to curl. It'll go flat again later on, but it will curl. So all we're doing, and I'm going to use the old one to start with. What I want to do this time is move these around just a little bit so that I can work out some colours. Probably overthink it, you know, as you do. And then I can work out where I want to put in some extra colours. Maybe a little bit of pink. Pink. Raspberry. Some of them come out really well. Others not so much. And some of them come out so that they're all over you. <laughs> but that'll come off with the hand sanitizer later on. Most of it. Ooh, that's going to look good tomorrow. Right. So, what I'm going to do now is pop that blending solution on. Now, I like to pop it on my felt. You can pop it on there, but I want, to wa want you to watch what happens when I pop it on. So, we're just going to pop a little bit on. All right, so you can see that it hasn't got that much on there. And this time, so what's happening... I lift that up Look. so you can see that it's mottling it I suppose would be the best word kind of makes a stained glass kind of look and you can just give yourself whatever look you want to but again for a background they look awesome so try not to smear it if you want this sort of effect Smear a little bit down there because I want it to cover all of my vellum. Because as I said before, I'm doing these as pop as sizes that will fit in my journals as pockets. Look at that. How easy was that? They dry really quickly. It is the middle of winter here. It's not that warm. Um... But yeah, these ones do take a little bit as in to stop them curling and they will want to, you know, they'll curl right up on themselves. So it's just a matter of straightening them out just a little bit. And you can see why I always have my fingers like this now. So I just tend to do this a little bit. You can quicken the drying with your heat gun. Um... It does dry with a heat gun. I tend to find with these, you can see, if I put that up there, can you see the shiny bits and the non-shiny bits? A lot of it has already dried. Your other side is that. Okay, so it's still there, but not as vibrant as this side. Okay. So just while that one's finishing off drying, very quickly, what I'm going to do, move that, flick that one over, and we'll very quickly grab another one. Let's say, well, it's July, isn't it? So let's do Christmas in July. What's today? 24th. So mm, Christmas Eve in July. This is red pepper. Let's do... Red pepper and bottle, which I know I would have got these ones for Christmas in the first place. And I'm just going to allow them to drag along each other. What did I do with bottle? Here it is. So 
that'll make some wonderful Christmas colours. You could just about do any colour you like. So when I was setting up, I thought where I was using the paper towel before, I just cut a slightly larger piece of felt and I thought it might just out in the edges. I want some of that green. This is just pure play now. I have no idea what this is going to turn out like. I truly don't. So we're just, we are literally playing now. We'll see what happens. I want some of it. So all I'm doing is dabbing in to where those edges come out. Just a little bit of red in there. But they do run really easily. So I'm just gonna dab those in, fill out my edges. So I've only got two colors going on here. And yeah, I think this one works better, even better, more better, you know what I mean, than the paper towel. Right, so I've just got that going on. Yeah, looks all right. Let's just play. I'm just going to do them up. This time, what I want to do is drop the blending solution directly onto that. Make sense? Watch. Which is why I've put it into a small bottle, just so that I can drop it. Can you see the colour disappearing? See how it's spreading out like a flower? I wonder if I can do it holding it up. See that? And that gives you a different effect. Again, let's just run it across there. I don't want to lose too much colour. A little bit over here. I haven't got it very strong over here in colour, so it might not take a great deal. What it will do, actually that's a good way of showing you, that blending solution, what it will do is take the colour completely off. Watch. See that? And that's what the blending solution, or the isopropyl alcohol that's in it, and the blending solution and your hand sanitizer and all of that. That's what it's doing. It's removing the color again. So it allows you to do those sorts of things. If you don't like it, don't use it. Turn around and pick up your foam that you just, or your felt, sorry, I'm so used to foam these days, that you just had, and just dab over it, which gives you a different look again. So now I've really picked up that red and I'm coming back over the green. And see now that I'm putting it everywhere, it's wanting to curl the vellum. Now this works on acetate. Um, makes wonderful tags and things with acetate and it works beautifully on gloss paper. Uh, photo paper, it's, it'll work, just not quite as well from memory. So look at that effect. Now, that one's not going to take long to dry at all. I wish I had a Christmas stamp sitting around. Oh, hang on. I think I might have. Um, most of my Christmas stuff are still packed, but I should have something sitting. Hang on a moment. I'll put the lid on that. Sit you there. Sit you there just while you're drying. Bear with me. Five seconds. I should have a darkened door. Um, oh, let me have a think. Here we go. I've got this one. I wonder what that would look like on it. We'll soon find out, won't we? So, it'll fit. Yeah, it will fit. And that looks like it's dry already. 
few little spots that are slightly wet. No, they're all right. Right, let's get this Misty back out. Move that. Move that out of the way. Open this up. So join her. Now, you'll notice that I don't move out my foam, even though I'm doing a rubber one with that. I just make sure my rubber stamps are closer to the edge. It's called laziness, nothing else. I'll just knock you up there. Make sure we're up the right way, which is that way. Sit you on there, like a so. Sue. Attach that to that one. Let's have a look. Nothing like playing on the run. So again, I'm just I've just pulled out this stud on it. It's the only little ink that I've got sitting in front of me because I actually cleaned up everything else. Right. So this does this mean we've can technically say we've started Christmas. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Over. It was fairly mottled. So whether it's going to show or not, we'll find out. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. That looks fairly even. Look at that. So you can see that it's really shiny, the ink. I'm just gonna close that, sit that over there. And I'll sit it on a piece of white so that you can see the effect. Can that, does that show without it, mm, without that light going onto it? If I lift it up. There, can you see that? How's that? That's come up a trip. How easy? How easy was that? It's again, once again, it's pulling out our, I don't know, from my ghosts of crafts past playlist, I suppose. I need to put this in. Um, because it is, I haven't played with these oh, for so long. I, they're just. Yeah, I really haven't played with these for so long. What else do I have? Eggplant, that might be nice. Um, but they're out everywhere these days. So many companies have the alcohol inks out. And I haven't played with them or done anything. And look at these. Yeah, we'll get a new piece of white. I've got some more folded just here somewhere. Right, hang on, hang on. Under my bellum. Fresh new piece of white so that you can see these. Can we see that? And we see that. And we see our birdies. Is that light? Not brilliant, is it? Um, just believe. What else did we do? I did that one with one of my flowers, very lightly stamped on it. You can only just see it, but it is there. Not with this light on it, sorry. Um, I've got that mottled one. And then I've got the Christmas one that we've just done that is now drying. If I sit you there, and if I sit you there, are you going to... Hold on to that. Look at that. How's that? Did we enjoy that? I know it was only very short, um, but I just had to play with these. Because, as I said, I... Um, let's have a look. You know, right, I pulled that out and went, I could do that. And yes, I have. So, yes, these are a thicker one because they were parchment paper. Um, but it's just, you can see that what this is, is this. It's where it's had blending solution on it. 
So, you know, and you've got this one, which really is this sort of effect. So they're very, very easy to use. All you're going to need is some alcohol inks. As I said, we've all got our hand sanitizer around at the moment. You can use paper towel. You can use foam. If you don't have a square one and you've got one of these, still got your little Velcro on it. Just cut a circle in your felt and pop that on there. So really, you've got everything else there. All you need are a few alcohol inks. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have, please subscribe. Please hit that like. Please hit the notifications bell um, so that you know when else I'm putting things up. You never know with me what's going to come up or when they're coming up. So the notifications bell always works. So thanks for that, guys. Till I see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye.